Morning people. Good morning Vietnam. Yeah, it's right this microphone, it's really good. Do you like the office? Uh, man cub here. Say hello Richard. Hello Richard. Yeah. Okay. Right. What we're here to do today is to look at this. And I am absolutely shocking at holding things up to a camera. Believe it or believe it not, but it's this. Canon 5D Mark, Mark IV. God, I nearly said a Mark III there. Canon 5D Mark IV. Is it auto focused? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, lent to me for the purposes of review. I haven't bought it. Um, lent for me. I, I haven't bought it. I'm li keep looking at the wrong place. Okay. Lent to me for the purposes of review by Gary Matt and Uncle Reese. Thank you very much, Reese. Okay. So, what, I'm, what I was, uh, when I originally said I'd do this, what I was originally. I'm interested in was how the autofocus performance um, matched up to hmm, what is possibly the best camera that I've tested um, for long lens autofocus, which is the 1DX Mark II. Yeah, hmm, sorry, it's quite a, quite a shock as soon as I'm a Nikon user, isn't it? But well, there you go. And. Um, Basically, what I was interested in was how would this camera body cope with the absolute bog standard Canon user wildlife photography lens? This puppy, the wonderful 500mm f4 L A F L I S 2. Yeah, beautiful lens, mm, mm, mm. gorgeous piece of kit, and um, super fast super sharp and quite light ho oh, oh. ho I see land hoy yeah anyway I'm going to better stop misbehaving and uh, what we'll do is we'll move the uh, little camera downstairs and uh, we'll look at how I set the autofocus menu up and uh, so I shall see you momentarily or well, well I won't but you'll see the back of the camera say to our Richard try Richard Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've come down onto the table. I said downstairs, didn't I? Yeah, well, we haven't gone downstairs. All we've done is go from the top of this monitor. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? Whoa. Get out of the light. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Mm. Okay. Oh, dear. Small things amuse small minds. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, so, what I want to do is just mention how I set up um, any Canon camera to be quite honest with you um, if we go to the um, autofocus menu you're not going to see the touchy feely screen on the back of the 5D Mark III uh, Mark, I do wish I'd stop calling it 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV I should say stupid boy Andy autofocus and if we scroll through the cases um, you see down here we've got these three separate um, controls um, in amongst the various uh, well, various six cases um, that Canon actually give you and um, I mean ostensibly uh, anybody who's actually bought my um, long lens guide to Nikon and Canon um, autofocus will actually know what tracking sensitivity and acceleration deceleration tracking in AF point auto switching actually do. Anybody who's been to one of my Calumet autofocus workshops will know what they do. Um, a lot of you out there who've done neither, um, some of you will know what they do and a lot of you will only think you know what they do and uh, yeah, less said about that the better. But I mean I don't like flicking through these cases. I like to use these controls um, in a custom way, um, sort of depending on what I've got going on in front of me and what lens I happen to have on at the time. And so I like to register these three um, tools in my personal menu. And if I tap on the star, um, now I've got my personal menu up and here you can see that I've got tracking sensitivity, XL D cell tracking, auto point switching, and um, I like tone priority, which I always have 
um, in my personal menu on a Canon and uh, AF micro adjustment more of that momentarily um, so I mean registering things inside your personal menu is dead easy um, I just go to configure and select items to register and I, I can basically scroll through here and I can put in anything I want um, should, Let's go scroll through auto lighting optimizer yeah. but anyway it doesn't matter so we can press the set button and we can go and press ok and uh, then I can go back to the menu and uh, menu again and back into my personal menu and uh, you can see I've got this auto lighting optimizer option in there and I can get set, go set, and it says not available because the associated function, because of the associated function setting, I like tone priority, really good. So we'll press OK. Um, that won't work because I've got that enabled. But well, there you go. And um, that just goes to show how you register things into your personal menu. Um, I don't really want to grab that register, and I shall take it out later. Um, but. Um, as we've already said, tracking sensitivity, Axel D cell tracking, and auto point switching to a degree, I always find it quite handy to have them in my personal menu. However, just as late, I've found that AF micro adjustment is a handy thing to have registered in your personal menu. Good God, Andy, why? Because we all know you do not like AF micro adjustment to either be on a Nikon or a Canon. Well, yes and no. Um, when AF micro adjustment first came out, well, to me, it's people who get enslaved in so-called calibrating their lenses to their cameras. It, it, they don't know what they're doing, and it, it's it's a complete not a can of worms if you start getting into it. Um, but it is a useful tool to use on the fly, and. All of a sudden, um, I've noticed with Canon gear, you actually really do need to have the ability to quickly adjust this, um, these values. And um, I'll explain why. Um, when I first got this camera from Calumet and the 500mm, um, I started doing sharpness testing on the lens before we did any anything else, any moving subject testing or anything like that. And I found I just could not get a sharp picture of a flat brick wall 35 metres from the camera. And um, it was really frustrating me. And uh, I was noticing that the camera was sort of front focused a little bit. And I got a little bit concerned about this and um, I went off, pardon me, and uh, went around to a friend's house who got a um, other 500mm uh, Mark II and uh, a couple of 1DXs and a 5D Mark III. And we did the same sort of um, bracketed tests on this camera body with this Calumet lens, uh, this 5D Mark IV body with his 500mm lens, and his three camera bodies uh, with both 500mm, and they all seem to need the same level of micro adjustment. And um, on static subjects, or relatively static subjects, and basically, if I press set and go in here, and um, I go and press the info button. Uh, one thing I should just say um, before we go any further is that um, when we actually do this properly, we should be on adjust by lens. The only reason we can't get into the menu is because I haven't actually got a lens uh, mounted on this body at the moment, as you can clearly see. Yeah. Um, because the only kind of lens I happen to have in here, come on, focus, yeah, is a um, 500mm LIS, and of course it will not. Come on, focus, damn you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on. 
No, yes, 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 yeah. Okay, so um, as I said, to do this properly, you would actually use the option adjust by lens, but because I haven't got a lens mounted on the camera at the moment, I have to use this all by same amount. Therefore, I get this info change um, option here. And of course, so we hit the info button and away we go. Okay, so I just thought I'd better just add that little bit in for you. Okay, and uh, let's get back to the main bit of the movie. And the basic amount of um, autofocus or micro adjustment that I was finding on virtually every bit of Canon gear I tested with a 500mm lens was basically that a micro adjustment of plus four and I'll go through a couple of test images on this um, just to show you a little bit later on and um, yeah I thought that was quite strange and then a colleague of mine pointed me at a an article on uh, the bl a blog belonging to Artie Morris, Birds is Art, over in the US, and suddenly Artie started occasionally putting AF micro adjustment values on some of his pictures, and if you'll note, if you, you can go over there and you can have a look yourself, and uh, it was 600 mil with and without a two times teleconverter, he's sort of using plus five, plus six, yeah, and um, mm, very strange. And um, like I say, back here at um, zero, um, which is the default value, um, you find that the lenses are sort of, well, the system itself, lens and camera body, are actually in a sort of permanent state of um, front focus. Mm. I wonder why that could be. The only thing is I've asked Canon twice in the last three and a half weeks and nobody can be asked to answer me, which I find quite appalling, really. Um, but anyway, there you go. It's a typical camera manufacturer. I always thought Canon was slightly more professional than Nikon, but uh, eh, seemingly not. But anyway, mm, that's me screwed for any test gear direct from Canon now, isn't it? Because I've been screwed for test gear from Nikon forever, because uh, I keep slagging them off. Now, only because they deserve it, because they're idiots. Anyway. Um, now, we have this, um, I've been finding this plus four micro adjustment setting really does generate some spectacularly sharp images um, out of this camera lens combo. Um, but when we go to photograph something that's moving directly towards the camera, oh dear, 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 no, we cannot have that plus four. Otherwise, if I'm photographing a dog, I think I'm, I think I'm focused on its nose, and actually I'm focused about two foot behind its tail. Yeah, it, not a good idea. Um, so what I've been finding is that um, a setting of minus three um, works really, really well. I mean, I was out photographing uh, my friend Mark Davis's, um, one of his Springer Spaniels, uh, Morgan, chubby little monkey. Um, lovely little dog now he'll, he'll run up and down the field all day long for a ball and um, he's moving sort of around seven and a half eight meters per second and with this setting of uh, minus three and um, tracking sensitivity value and an XL D cell tracking value of plus two that's quite strange and it's been extreme but nonetheless plus two tracking sensitivity, plus two Axel D cell tracking, and minus three AF micro adjustment, um, and uh, an AF point pattern of um, AF points around. Wow, um, you know, I mean, the camera was rattling along at sort of what it's, what it's supposed to rattle along at an high speed AI servo seven frames a second. And basically, within reason, um, all the shots, all the sequential uh, shots that are two were sharp. It occasionally drops the old one, but you know. Anyway, I'll show you those images momentarily as well. So uh, there we go. Um, sort of brief um, 
intro to uh, the requirement of the line finding for AF micro adjustment and basically putting all your autofocus controls on your personal menu on the uh, 5D Mark IV. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so this is the 5D Mark IV with the 500mm f4 L IS USM 2 lens at zero micro adjustment and uh, yeah hmm you'd think I mean it's got no adjustments on it whatsoever so you'd think yeah with a bit of sharpening yeah we can pull that back however there it is with plus four micro adjustment in it so you know <laughs> we are not getting the best out of the lens with zero micro adjustment now with plus four in we're getting the best out of the lens and here we are again with plus four micro adjustment and uh, yes and the other really good thing that really impressed me about the uh, 5d mark IV is this 10,000 ISO yeah that's okay isn't it okay so what we'll do now is we'll move on to looking at a sequence of images um, of a subject running directly at the camera lens. Okay, so here we go. Here's Morgan, the Springer. Now, let me just reiterate the settings. If you remember when we were talking about setting up the AF menu on the uh, inside the personal menu um, on the 5D Mark IV and um, how I was talking about the AF micro adjustment okay so we're no longer on a static subject far from it and uh, so we are at minus three micro adjustment we are at tracking sensitivity plus two acceleration deceleration tracking plus two auto point switching is left at the default zero and we are at the moment in zone AF now zone AF it should be focusing on the closest point underneath the nine point group which is in the middle of the frame because that's the zone that we use and I'm sure it's nine yeah, I'm sure it's a nine point group but um, anyway so let's take um, the image up to 100 percent and okay so Morgan's about 31 32 33 meters away from me I would think and uh, yeah is it in focus <laughs> It's passable. It's passable. Let's move on to the next shot in the sequence. And yeah, oh, that's it. He's opened his eyes. But that's got a little cataracts just starting. But uh, tell you what, it doesn't stop him from. It doesn't stop him, I should say, from running in the slightest. And uh, doesn't stop him from seeing anything to play with or anything to do with food, uh, as his girth will tell you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's gonna Mark's Messi's Wendy's gonna kill me for this, but anyway, there you go. I know what Springers should look like, and they shouldn't look this tubby, but well, there you go. Anyway, I digress. So it's sharp, yeah. Come on, it's give it's give us all a break. This is an eminently usable image. Next shot in the sequence. Oh, I've got my eyes shut. Sharp again. Uh, next one, sharp. Next one, it's just wandering off a little bit. Front of the muzzle still sharp, but obviously it's sort of cranked a bit far forward. And uh, we are shooting at f8 here, so basically the muzzle is getting on towards the back of the depth of field or the rear limit of depth of field. But um, you know, it is what it is. So let's say it's half drop that shot, shall we? Um, getting it back again, nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's not a four star grade sharpness, but you know, it's it's eminently usable. And uh, another one, we're looking a bit, uh, hmm, a bit B grade sharpness, that one. Um, I hope we're coming back now. What a shot, straight down his gullet, yeah? Now, how, how many bits of food has back been the last sight they've ever seen? Um, yeah, usable, sharp. Uh, 
that's not looking too bad at all. We've got nice clarity in the um, in the uh, crinkles on the end of his nose. Eyes are looking not too bad. Um, you know, next one, it is what it is. It's not horrifically out of focus. And uh, there we go. What's wrong with that? Next one. It's all right. Next one. It's all right. Getting closer though, don't forget this dog's doing about seven and a half, eight meters per second. Um, so he's getting quite close to me. And of course, the closer he gets, the more work the autofocus has got to do in the same amount of time. And don't forget, um, I've not got a battery pack on with a big battery in, I'm just using the standard small uh, 5D Mark IV battery. So it, there is a possibility that you know it's not supplying the maximum voltage to the autofocus motor in uh, this 500 mil so you know overall the autofocus i expect the autofocus to be slower in the 5d mark IV than it is in say the 1dx or the 1dx mark ii basically because of the vastly bigger battery that is in both of those aforementioned cameras anyway let's carry on next one not looking too bad at all and the next one he looks like he's about to fall asleep while he's running doesn't he yeah okie dokie that's um hmm, yeah it's definitely dropped the ball on that one but of course we are getting on towards minimum focus it's trying to pull it back and of course with it being zone focus i would expect it to be trying to pull back to the nearest point of the subject which is going to be the dog's muzzle and uh, yeah that's okay usable again muzzle sharp eyes running out of depth of field even at f8 what's this distance from there to there on a springer four inches something like that so you know even at f8 at these sort of distances you've got very very little in the way of depth of field but um, move on to the next one it's definitely dropped the ball on that but I think that's the last one in that zone AF sequence and uh, basically he's that close he's at the focus limiter so uh, moving on to the next one now we are in um, AF point surround none of this closest focus malarkey that you get in zone focus and um, this is where the actual a active af point is governed by yours truly and uh, yeah so it's all to me slightly harder work keeping the uh, uh keeping the focus in the right place but um there we go sharp enough and again mm, you know you sort of drop the ball on that one a little bit um but it's getting it back now and uh, fourth one it's yeah, um, mm, still a little bit soft you can see where the depth but where the depth of field is it's at the ears so it's all and the eyes aren't sharp so mm, this is most likely where it's actually focused it's focused behind the eyes and yeah again it's well it is what it is however now it sort of um, picked its skirts up a bit, realised what's going on, and we've got an eminently sharp photograph. And when you consider this is a full frame image, this is where you want the dog, this is where you want the subject, it's that size in the frame, nice. Okay. Next one, it's usable. Next one, nose is sharp eyes just about just just going slightly soft but well what can you do again it's because it's getting close to the camera depth of field is slightly reduced here distribution of depth of field is a lot better um, we've got better overall sharpness you know we're still sharp on the front of the nose good distribution of depth of field here you've got to remember you are asking an awful lot of any camera to do this job 
and we are asking I would suggest what we're asking of the 5D Mark IV fitted with this 500mm um, we are at the extreme limit of the operational envelope it's been designed for um, truly we are and uh, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to do Canon any favours here. Why on earth would they've never done me one? But, you know, we've got to give them a break. We've got to cut them some slack somewhere. And uh, I mean, I reckon overall, I'm, uh, I quite like this camera. Yeah, I mean, we're just mega close to the camera now on this one. Um, yeah, it's soft. No two ways about it. Cameras drop the ball. And again, drop the ball there. Um, but now, I mean, look how close this dog is now I mean it's crazy and uh, yeah even now it's sort of realized the mistake it was making and it's got everything right you cannot argue with that image we probably reduced down at this distance to what two and a half inches of depth of field um, in front and behind the plane of focus and uh, it's bang on I, I, can't, I can't fault the camera for what it is um, yeah, still sharp on the nose, running out of depth of field now. Oh dear, gummy gosh. And we're still sharp on the nose. And how, how close is this dog now? Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy close. Right on the edge of the focus limiter, or getting very close to it. And uh, still sharp on the end of the nose. And uh, still sharp on the end of the nose. It's mental. And. Uh, still sharp on the end of the nose okay so now we've on to another sequence and uh, i think what we'll do is we'll just buzz through this sequence very quickly and uh, i'm looking for my uh, the last one where i actually shot the dog in portrait um but as you can see i dropped the ball there definitely but you know that's the first one in the sequence where it's really badly dropped dropped the focus this is doing all right woohoo yeah what's wrong with that nothing um yeah sort of soft on the nose eyes are sharp ears are getting just slightly out of focus at the tips but it's still sharp action photography yeah it's dropped the ball there picked it back up there Mm, yeah too close moderate sharpness on the nose way out of focus on the eyes and now we're dead sharp on the eyes and the nose is slightly out of focus which is if anything's going to be out of focus we can live with the nose being out of focus and the eyes sharp so you know it's still eminently usable and uh, what we got here that will be um, yeah shrink it down a little bit it will look sharp enough what we like here yeah nose sharp eyes soft eyes trying to come into focus nose soft now are we on a portrait yes we are okay so this is this is a bit awkward to shoot because i haven't got a battery grip on the uh, camera so um it's sort of me my thumb sort of hanging down and my arms a bit to hands a bit twisted but you know um sharp enough like i say he's going he's, he's about 30 31 32 meters away here and uh yeah i'm just flicking through them now you know all these are usable sharp shots he's getting towards the um sort of distance from the camera now where i like my subjects to be sort of in that 20 to uh, 10 meter mark yeah that's soft that's the first one it's dropped the ball on um as you can see sharpness is on the chest is that my fault um no no because i'm still focused here um possibly my fault yeah, anyway um, but on bum bum yeah moderately you can get away with that um here we go nothing wrong in that Mm, whoops a daisy where are we come on um, 
Now, nothing wrong in that at all. Morgan, open your eyes, otherwise you'll have a crash. Come on, mate. There we go, again. Nothing wrong. Mm, maybe it's dropping the ball there. Definitely dropped the ball there. Got it back now. Eyes nice and sharp. Yeah, it's a bit sort of a naff image, but well, there you go. Um, eminently usable shot. Eminently usable. Um, another one. Yeah. Bit soft on the eyes. Eyes in focus. Roughly. Nose out of focus. Have a look at the tongue. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, drop shot. Is that dropped? Sort of. But, I mean, you're just so close to the camera now. I mean, we are, you know, the, the um, focus group is out up against the uh, minimum focus stop here. So, and uh, last run. Same sort of uh, situation. We're still in um, one with eight friends, as they call it, AF points around. Still with this exact same uh, focus control settings. Uh, first two shots sharp. Sharpish. Sharp. Sharp or usable. Usable, sharp. Usable, sharp. Usable. Eminently usable. Look at that. Those fly knees, my god. Usable sharp again. And again. Mm, sort of um, wandering off a little tiny bit. Got it back again. Eminently usable shot there. That sort of uh, dropped the ball, but then again, I sort of dropped the ball with the uh, positioning of the camera. So that's, I'll say, I'll go 50 50 my fault, camera fault there. And uh, but you know, it's got it back as soon as the face has come back up into the focus group. Yeah, nothing wrong in that at all. Yes, we've run out of depth of field now because we're so close. Um, Raise a sharp nose, um, eyes are soft. But, um, I mean, you, you could print that out A3, A3+, plus, and it would look razor sharp all over. Um, nose sharp again, you know, it's, um, it's doing its job. Um, again, you know, you, you could get away with that. Next one. Mm, yeah. Just too close to the camera now. Again, too close to the camera, but you know, the nose is it's doing a really good job on the nose, it's doing the best it can. And uh, there you go, eyes pretty much sharp as he runs out of the camera viewfinder. And so, you know, I mean, what can you say? Okay, so as we said before, what can you say? 5D, um, told you I was awful at holding stuff up for the camera. Um, 5D Mark IV. Um, 500 mil f4 prime latest version thereof yeah um, done a relatively good job um, I'm quite surprised at how well it's performed on um, some of the jobs I've asked it to do and uh, yeah there you go yeah good little camera good little camera um, you know again uh, I haven't bought this camera it's been uh, lent to me for review by uh, the uh, nice people at Calumet and uh, ooh, yeah oh look at that I think I'd better uh, move that because I'm far prettier than the camera oh, so they tell me um yeah um, I'm impressed really um would I like to spend the money on it hey I never like spending my money on anything isn't that right Richard yeah, thought so. Um, so there you go. Um, if you've um, not, um, if you're not 100% familiar with how your autofocus works, be you Nikon or Canon, um, go and buy my autofocus guide. Yeah, go on, spend your money. 
It's uh, a lot cheaper than a camera, and it's a lot cheaper than coming to me for a day's tuition. I must stop looking at this screen and look up there. Anyway, link to where you can buy my uh, autofocus guide should be down below in this video somewhere, and uh, or it might be up above. I don't know. It just depends where I put it when I actually edit the video. And um, I will be producing something on 5D Mark IV, and. Um, possibly in conjunction with the one the X Mark II um, but that's going to take a, um, another month or so yet and um, we'll be looking more at um, AF micro adjustment etc and um, yeah so keep your eyes open and your ear to the ground um, and then you can go and buy that as well um, because when you spend money with me it actually pays for me to do all this sort of stuff so you become aware of what's going down yeah it's true so anyway there we go that's me i'll shut up now i'll i'll try looking at the right place right camera yeah um that's me done um so it's good night from me and it's good night from him